dear viewers, dear beloved, and uh, we are here with uh, fellow believers, and we are going to talk about the chronology from Adam until the return of Christ. That will be a blast, of course, because we will go through a chronology of which, uh, in my view, uh, of which there has no not once been a challenge even, let alone a proof that it is wrong or anything about it is wrong. So again, I'm challenging you, dear watchers, if there's something I'm missing in the chronology, please let me know through the email uh, address mentioned below in the description of the video. So don't hesitate. Tell me what you, you think it is wrong. Up till now, no one has been able to, to really refute anything in the chronology. But let's go. You never know. Let's start the, let's start the screen share. Okay. Uh, first of all, I propose to go down and, uh, yeah, that's better, I think, down uh, to the assumption because the assumptions are regarded to be the foundation of the chronology because if the assumptions are not correct, no, it's just the same, the same sheet, but downstairs at the, yes. On the need, uh, yes, that's one. That's the one. Um, it is not possible to increase the screen, right? I think. To so to decrease our our faces and increase that screen, the share screen. You don't think so? No problem. Then we're going with the with the assumptions as are. Uh, first of all, these are assumptions and findings. I'm not going to go through every one of them. The findings speak for themselves. But first of all, let me uh, be very clear that all this whole chronology is only done with, um, with uh, information from scripture. The only exception to that is 70 AD, but 70 AD is a, is a date uh, of that everyone knows and everyone agrees upon so that is to me that's a that's a that's a no-brainer but for the rest only scriptural information very important so it is there is no connection whatsoever to the common eras according to history uh no support from chronology of Manito, ptolemy those are the well-known uh, sources that uh, church people Christianity uh, takes from no uh, only scripture so there is one thing that we need to be also clear about and that is point C only for the ages of the patriarchs uh, I have worked with the Masoretic text and not with the Septuagint because the Septuagint the LXX is not reliable with regard to the numbers only, the ages of the patriarchs. So this is important because the, uh, the Alexander, uh, it was compiled, the Septuagint was compiled 200 before Christ in ex Alexandria, Egypt. And the Egyptian government wanted to have a fantastic uh, history of their uh, dynasties in the past of the pharaohs. And that's why they wanted to stretch those eras in which they were having the power in the world. So, uh, and the rabbis, they complied to their request. So mm -hmm. that is the only thing. And in, in the Alex X, in the Septuagint, you will see that, let's say, Adam, Adam was 230 years old when he got set. But it's not true. The reality is that he was 130 years old when he got set as an example and every age of the patriarchs was l stretched by a hundred years so no the rest septuagint to me is superior to the masoretic text 
for the whole uh, uh, Old Testament, the, the Hebrew Scriptures, ex except the numbers, the ages of the patriarchs. So I hope this is clear. Another very important assumption is point D, um, the period length assumption. So in our Western culture, if we, if I say I am 31 years old, then uh, maybe you can go to that uh, to that uh, sheet, uh, Joel. Uh, yes, this one. If I say I'm 31 years old, then it means that I I my my 31st birthday was in the past, and now today I'm 31 plus some some time in between 31 and 32 so in reality if i say in western culture i'm 31 years old i am in reality in my 32nd year do you see that very important so in scripture i would have said i am 32 years old so if scripture says Adam was 130 years old when he got set. In reality, he was in his 130th year, and we don't know what month it was. So what do we do in the, in the calculation of the chronology? We, and that's the, that's the bottom line, um, that's the bottom line drawing, the schedule. We take as a starting point an average as an, on an average, half a year so then adam was exactly 129.5 years so we do that with all the ages in that sense so later on as an example we will see that when jesus started his ministry scripture says he was 30 years old but scripture also mentions i think the word uh around around 20, uh, uh 30 years old but that means, scripturally speaking, that he was not yet 30 years old, but he was in his 30th year. So we have calculated with 29.5. That's the best. And by the way, I can tell you already, this is a little spoiler alert, that he was exactly 29 and a half <laughs> when he started his ministry. But okay, I hope this is also clear so in reality, scripturally speaking, uh, if an age is set script in scripture to be 31 years of age, then in reality, it's in the 31st year. So on average, it's 30.5. I hope it's clear. So let's go to the assumptions back. All right. So I hope that point D is clear. Point E is also very uh, relevant. And that is that there are no gaps in the timeline. I'm sorry, I forgot to do something. I'm really sorry. I have to uh, clear up uh, uh, a fan here because it uh, it uh, disturbed the microphone. Sorry. get in trouble <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry for the interruption um, I think now it sounds a bit uh, more quiet so a uh, point E is again relevant because there are no gaps in the timeline that is very important to mention because people think that some things that happened are not mentioned in scripture etc no Scripture has taken everything into account in order for us to calculate the chronology in a right way. Also, in the chronology, you will see that the line will, uh, will uh, what is the word, it will flow through the Judean side of Israel and not the northern tribes. So it's the southern tribes. So the southern kings, the kings of Judea, those will be the 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 flow. Uh, let's say the line uh, in which we go uh, to the birth of Jesus, and of course through his ministry 
until his return. So that's also important to mention, no gaps. Also point F is very important. Always uh, take into account that Jubilee years are holy. Look at Leviticus 25 verse 10. That's the basis. That's where it said that a Jubilee year is to be holy. And what does holy mean? It means to be set apart. That means it's apart from the 49 years. So how does the, uh, how does the count, uh, uh, be calculated? It's, uh, uh, the whole count from Adam, from the creation of Adam. It's the, the count starts already. Only it was uh, revealed to Israel later. But the count was already started and it was already valid. And it starts with always a, a, a week of years. And that is organized in the same way as a week of days. That means six days. And the seventh day is a Sabbath. The same with the years. Six years of working. The seventh, seventh year is a, uh, the seventh year is a Sabbath year. And that's called, I think, a sh um, and that, that week is the Shabuah, I think. Yep. I always, uh, 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 am confused between Shabuah and Shemitah. Anyway. So, uh, and that, then you have seven blocks of those seven year blocks. Again, seven times of those seven year blocks, then you arrive at a period of 49 years. Keep that in mind, 49 years. Seven times seven, right? Right. But then the next year is always the 50th year and not the first year of the next 49 year cycle. That is wrong. That's what a lot of Christian teachers do. Wrong. The Jubilee year is to be set apart. So again, we are talking about 50 year Jubilee cycles. 50 year cycles. So that's easy. It makes it easy. So blocks of 50 years and that's a Jubilee cycle. And also one additional remark. I will revisit it later. The last sabbatical year, so only the 49th year of that block, the last sabbatical year before a jubilee year is 10 days longer. So that is a one year and 10 days. That says a lot later. We will mm -hmm. revisit that. Okay. So now I think this is clear. The jubilee cycles, we will revisit that, of course, when we talk, we will talk about the 70 weeks of Daniel. Uh, I already mentioned G that the timeline goes through the Judea and not through the northern tribes of Israel. And the rest are findings. So you will see a defined design in this chronology of exactly three times two millenniums. That is six days or six millenniums, four times 500 years, etc. You can go through it symmetry in many periods the years very important this one the years point l the years are not to be regarded as jewish years of 360 days and 30 day months no that's wrong why because the jewish calculation also corrects after a couple of years or even in some years are 353 days, some years are 383 days, they correct for agricultural cycles. And that's logical. So what we do, and that's the most healthy way, I think, and the most um, consistent way, is just use our solar years, which are immediately agricultural years. So let's be clear on that. That's how we will calculate years. So again, let's see. I think, yeah, I think we've gone through the assumption. So then let's go to the top of the sheet. And uh, I will then explain 
the three columns at the left. Uh, those columns are from left to right, the year AD. So when you see a minus number, it is BC, of course. So this is the year AD, as we know it. We are now in 2024 AD. The second from the left is the year FA. That just means the year from Adam. Very important, especially uh, um, in the uh, events that are before Christ. But still important uh, after Christ because it has to end at the year 6000. This eon, this uh, day of man is six days. And that is six millenniums. So that's how God has designed it. Six working days. And the seventh millennium will be the thousand years of peace or rest. So I hope you see the logic there. So uh, also look at the green column from Adam. And the third one, the gray one, is just the length of an event in years. Or that can also be half years. Um, uh, also, that is the uh, column. So the two, the first two columns are calculation columns, and only the third one, the length in years, are the columns in which a uh, number is keyed in directly. So I hope it's clear. So I think we can start. The beginning is quite straightforward. Uh, the the first one is of course Adam created in the year zero. Well, there is no year zero, as you know. So it, at the beginning of year one, Adam is created. That's how we should put it. So then Adam begets Seth. And of course, all the scripture passages are behind the description, of course. So Adam begets Seth. At what age? We told you already. In his 130th year. Scripture says he was 130 years when he begot set. But that's, again, not in his 131st year, because then it would be calculated like 130.5. And that would be wrong, scripturally speaking. By the way, I forgot to mention something to, uh, to substantiate this claim of the scriptural periods. And that is the example of, uh, of um, the circumcision. If someone is born on Nissan 10, and this has a reason why I mentioned Nissan 10. It will come back later. If someone is born on Nissan 10, certain day of the month, and he is circumcised, Eight days later, that is the instruction. That is the law. He has to be circumcised and, uh, when he is eight days, eight days old. That's what scripture says. When is the day that he has to be circumcised? There's only the one correct answer. Anyone? The eighth day. The eighth day. And what is the eighth day in the month of Nisan? It's the seventh day? What? I don't... Because he, he is born on Nissan 10. Yeah. So, so on what day in Nissan, when he is eight days old, does 17. he have to be circumcised? The 17th? 17. And not 18, as we would think in our Western culture. You see the point. That's yeah. how scripture calculates. So in his eighth day, that's when he is eight days old. When he is in his eighth day, you see the point. And that's when he has to be circumcised. Okay, so we continue. Adam begets Seth in his 130th year. That means 129.5. That's clear now. Seth begot Enos, all pretty straight forward. Enos begot Kenan. Kenan begot Mahalalel. Mahalalel begot Jared. Uh, this is also interesting. I'm not going to go into it deeply. But Jared is the sixth from Adam. The sixth generation. And there is a reason why I say that. 
because the fallen angels came on earth in the days of Jared. Yes. <laughs> Very interesting. But okay, let's wow. continue. Yeah. Okay. So Mahalalel begot Jared, that's the sixth. Jared begot Enoch. So Jared mm. was also the father of Enoch. Enoch is the seventh mm. from Adam. Enoch begot Methuselah. Methuselah means when he dies, it will come. And yep. Enoch was a preacher of, he warned against, uh, he warned, I would say, uh, re with regard to the judgment that will come on the earth. So Enoch was already warning humanity at that time that a great judgment, I think he also mentioned flood, but I'm not sure. I know that Noah mentioned flood, but anyway, Enoch was already, he was a prophet, and you could say a, a prophet of doom in his specific ministry, but people did not want to hear it. So the moment they were on the verge of not only attacking him, but killing him, he was taken away. He was taken away and placed uh, somewhere else on earth. I have a suspicion, only a suspicion, that he was placed in the only place that was uh, safe, guarded, and that is the Garden of Eden. Eden, because yes. It was safeguarded by two cherubim. So yeah. that's where he was. That's the only place where Enoch was safe. Anyway, mm -hmm. I think oh. this is just a, uh, a, a suspicion. Anyway, he was taken away and placed there. He was not taken to heaven. That's a lie, not true. But because in Hebrews 11, 13, we read that all those faith heroes died. And Enoch was one of them, was also mm -hmm. mentioned in Hebrew 11. Okay, so oh, yes. Methuselah begot Lamech. And again, when he dies, that's what Methuselah means. It comes. That means the flood comes. And who became the oldest human on earth ever lived? Methuselah. Methuselah. And that tells, that tells a lot about God's patience. You see the point. Okay. So Methuselah begat Lamech, and Lamech is the father of Noah. So we can read about the ages, all of them, in, in uh, the scripture passages. Um, Lamech is also, um, I, I, yeah, it's tempting to go into some detail, but Lamech died early. Because people lived like 900, and, 900 years back then. But Lamech died when he was 777 years of age. I think he is a martyr. He was a martyr. He died because he also said things that people didn't, didn't want to hear. That's why he died early. But anyway, the deluge, the flood, came when Noah was 600. That means, again, in his 600 year. And that you can read in Genesis 7, 11. And you, you see that in the gray column, that was 599.5 years old, Noah. And you see that the flood did not come in the year 1656, as the Christian chronology shows, but 1651, which is exactly 10 generations times half a year. Mm. So... I, you see, and that's five years. That's the difference. Because Christians, they calculate it with the exact years that scripture mentioned, but it's not true. It was the uh, rounded up. Rounded up. Rounded yep. up. And that's why you take half a year off. Okay. So the deluge was approximately one year. And then the waters dried. And then in Noah's the 601st year, they came out of the ark. The ark landed on Mount Ararat or Ararat, right? What does Ararat mean? The curse is reversed. Mm. Uh huh. And mm. when did the ark land on Ararat? So, so on Nisan, on Nisan 17. Ooh. Remember? that date oh, remember that date. the curse is reversed on nissan 17. <laughs> wow okay so 
a year later or two years later, Sam was a hundred years old and he begot Arpaxat. That's two years after the flood. Read about it in Genesis 11 first. Can you make it a little bit small? Yeah, 10. Okay. And then Arpaxat begot Selah. That's also a little, there's a little complication there because in Luke 3, verse 36, not Arpaxat, but Canaan is mentioned as the father of Selah. But Luke shows the judicial line and not the bloodline. So be careful there. You can see that also in verse 23, verse 23 that mentioned that Joseph is the father of Jesus. That is the judicial line. Okay. So Canaan was probably a surrogate father, judicially speaking. Okay. So Selah begat Haber. Haber is the name from which we got Hebrews. So mm -hmm. Haber is like the ancient father, the grand grandfather of the Hebrews, so to speak. Haber begot Pelech when he was 34 years old. You can see that Pelech in his days, the huge earthquake came that divided the one continent earth. Yep. In, in his days that happened. So, and that's how we got our current continents, etc., and islands. But this will change again at the end of this eon because everything will converge together. And I believe that in the fourth eon, the earth will be one continent again. Okay. So, uh, Pe uh, Pelek begot Rehu. Rehu begot Seruk when he was 32 years old. Seruk begot Nahor, and Nahor is the grandfather of Abraham. Nahor begot Terah, who is the father of Abraham, and Terah begot Abraham, Abram. And Terah, you, you cannot find directly in Scripture at what age Terah begot Abram. Be, scripture says that Terah was 70 years old uh, when he begot three, the three sons. Uh, I think Abram was the youngest. Uh, Terah died. So you can read about it, right? The, the scripture verses are there. Terah died at 205 years of age. You can read it in Acts 7, 4. And then after his father died, he was then 205 years, Abraham uh, left Haran, the country where he was uh, living at that time. And he was brought over by God from Haran uh, to this land, and that is uh, when he was 75 years of age when leaving Haran. So now we can calculate that Terah was 130 years old when he begot Abram, and that is the line we are looking for. So uh, also, that was the, and look at the green color now, the year from Adam. In what year was Abram born? In exactly the year 2000 from Adam. Think about it, but that's not all. Genesis 9, 28, 29 also says that after the deluge, the, after the flood, Noah lived still 350 years. So he was in his 950th year, 1051. Uh, 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 when the uh, flood came, uh, let me say it correctly, when he was born, sorry, 1051 after Adam, when Noah was born, plus 949, uh, that's the 950, 949.5, uh, when uh, he died, is exactly 2000 from Adam. So Noah died in the same year as Abram was born. Think about it. How God, how structured this is. And not only that, but you can say that Noah was like the patriarch of the old times, the ancient times. And Abraham is like the patriarch of these times, you could say. Until Christ, probably, you would say. But anyway, let's continue. Uh, so Abraham was 70 years old when he received 
God's promise, God's calling. He was 75 when he left Haran, but he was 75 years earlier when he received God's calling or promise. Important. Because the law, as in Galatians, you, you will see that the law came 430 years after the promise. Ah, so now you can calculate, and we will see that later, that the law came, uh, so the promise was in the year 2070 from Adam, and the law came in the year 2500, in the same year as the Exodus. And let's continue first. So Adam, uh, sorry, Abram was 70 years old when he received God's calling, and he was 100 years old when Isaac, his son, was born. We know that. And then Isaac was 60 years old when, when the twins were born, Esau and Jacob. Mm. And, um, uh, uh, and Jacob was 130 years old. You can cal calculate that. Uh, when he arrived with his family in Egypt. He lived in Egypt for 17 years and he dies at the age of 174 years of age. Jacob dies. Okay, so then we go to the Exodus. That happened in 2500 from Adam. 2500. And 2500 is, of course, 50 times 50 which is grace times grace so to speak you see how uh, structured again this chronology is how god works how structured everything uh, has become yeah. so the mm -hmm. again the exodus is in 2500 precisely from adam and i think that was in the uh, that was in the spring that was in Nissan, right? Because the Passover, the first time, you know, with the blood on the door posts, that was on Nissan 14. <laughs> that was the Passover. Because mm. at that day, the angel of that passed over every door with the blood on it. Right? Anyway, right. so in the same year, so they, they left Egypt. And in the same year, of course, a couple of days even later, when they were in the desert on Mount Sinai, they received the law. So that was in the year 2500 from Adam. Look mm. at that. So, mm. and then what happened? Unbelief happened. They sent spies. The spies were not believing except Joshua and Caleb. You know the story. And as a um, chastisement, uh, they had to stay in the desert for 40 years until a whole generation died, except again Joshua and Caleb. But their shoes and their clothes were totally, totally fine. There was not even an inkling of what is the, I'm not even sure what the English word is, but uh, what is it when your clothes get old and they get worn out? Yes, their clothes yeah. were not worn out or the shoes. Not at all. Why they were in the yeah. desert? So that's, of course, God in his, his mercy taking care of them. That was 40 years. You see that in the, that was in the next line. That is 25, 40 from Adam. And then the command is given to enter the land and conquer under the leadership of Joshua. Moses was not allowed to enter the land. We know the story. Moses died, I think, at 2540 also. And, uh, and then Joshua led the people into the land and they conquered seven peoples. They have exterminated, you can see that in Acts 13, verse 19, seven peoples in the land of Canaan. Not in one year, as it says, but in 10 years. That happened in 10 years. So when they got the land, they conquered the land, then they were settled, of course. Then the instruction came exactly in 2550 after Adam, from Adam. That is again a jubilee year. 
And in that year, the instruction was given in Leviticus 25 about the seven, the, the, sub, um, the sabbatical cycles of years, six years of working, the Sabbath year not allowed to sow, etc., etc., or reap. Also, uh, the Jubilee year after the 49th uh, Sabbath year, or the 49th year, sorry, that was also not allowed to sow. And that was exactly the year they were uh, um, taking um, hold of the land of Israel. Canaan becoming Israel. So, interesting. So, remember, we are now in the year 2550 from Adam. Then the period of judges start. That is a calculation. So that lasted for 347 years. We know that because we know that in scripture it says that um, exactly 480 years after the Exodus, King Solomon started building the temple in his fourth year of reign. See that below there in the year 2980 from Adam. You see that point? So that is when he started building the temple. So you saw, and he mm. reigned 40 years, but he started in his fourth year. So you have to subtract three whole years, three mm. complete finished years. So there you see the three years beside the 2980. Then David reigned 40 years. We go one line up. David reigned 40 years. So that, then we arrive at uh, 2937 uh, when he started reigning, David. And then Saul reigned 40 years and he died in that year, 2937. And he started reigning in 2897. Saul started reigning in 2897. That's why from 2520, uh, 2550 to 2897 is exactly 347 years. That's the period of the judges. Simpson or Samson, Delilah, Gideon, you know them. So, uh, Deborah, I said yeah, Delilah. I said the line. I mean, I mean, yeah, Deborah. Please the correct me here, guys. Correct me. Yes. Uh, I, I, I said Simpson, and I was, I was, <laughs> I was immediately okay. thinking of Delilah. My goodness. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I love romances too much. Okay, let's continue. Uh, <laughs> so we arrive now at twenty nine eighty. That is the year in which Solomon starts building the temple in his fourth year of reign. And uh, he uh, uh, finished the temple to end his palace 20 years later. So you can see in the next line that according to 1 Kings 6, 37, 38, you can follow all the, the text. And I also have a series about this where I show the, show the whole thing. So uh, he did seven years to build the temple, the magnificent Solomon temple, and he did 13 years to build his palace. So uh, together it's 20 years. So the great dedication, the celebration of the dedication of the temple was exactly in the year 3000 from Adam. Again. Structure upon structure in God's uh, in God's chronology. So read about it. I'm not going to read everything because then it will take too long. <clears throat> so we have to go through a lot yet. So then that is also a pivotal moment in that year 3000. Why? Because God appears to King Solomon. <clears throat> Why? Because God has two things to, to tell him. The first thing is a fantastic thing. He will bless Solomon if Solomon stays in God's ways and, of course, his people. If they stay in God's ways, he will bless them tremendously. And the second thing is a warning. If he doesn't stay in God's ways and go astray, then there will be curses upon them. So they will be chastised. And 
Then the next 70, 17 years happened. And what do you think? He went astray. He went after gods, strange gods of strange women, strange peoples. And, uh, and Solomon dies. God showed him mercy. And then he was put also added to his father's uh, graves. And then from that time on, in 3017 from Adam, there was a period of 413 years in which 20 kings reigned Judea after Solomon. And practically, with some exceptions, but practically all those 20 kings were quite bad in terms of not reigning in God's ways. So let's go quickly to the a separate sheet of the 20 kings. Uh, here you see a, a sheet with the total reign of all the 20 kings. So it starts with the 17 years or 18 years, including the throne change of Solomon. And then you see every text, af uh, every passage after that, you see all the 20 kings uh, after Solomon. Uh, we are not going to go through it, of course, but uh, you can scroll uh, uh, through it. And you will also see as a remark that King Hezekiah, point 13, he, um, I checked it, I wanted to be sure that uh, because scripture says something, if you go to the right, Joel, a little bit to the right, to mm -hmm. the cumulative, uh, this sheet, to the, yes, yes, you see that column H uh, shows the cumulative cumulative years, the total years from Adam. And there you see that exactly in the year uh, 3299, Scripture says that was a sabbatical year in the 15th year of Hezekiah. And in the 16th year, that was a jubilee year. And you see exactly there in the, the year 3300 from Adam, A.H. is Anohomini, from Adam, it was a jubilee year. So it totally uh adds up so uh look uh, show mm. the total of the years uh joel if you saw the total then we are finished with the sheet the total of all the years the 20 uh the, yes and then you will see that uh the total of the years is excluding the throne the change of throne is 410 including is 430 including the 17 years of Solomon. And if you go to the main sheet now, you will see that the 17 plus the 413, you see in the top, 17 years in the gray column plus 413 is 430. That's the 430, including the 17 years of Solomon after the building of the, the, the dedication of the temple. Okay, now that is clear. And then, of course, after the 20th king, then judgment happened from God. And that is the 70 year exile to Babylon under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar. And that is the next uh, line, 17 years in exile. So that is from the year 3430 from Adam to 3500. Again, a pivotal moment from Adam. You see how structured this is. So mm. this pivotal moment is a great one, a great, great, great one. Mm. Why? Because after that 70 years of exile, the prophet Daniel, he saw that he was at, he was at the end and, and he was uh, praying to God and uh, making supplication for his people because he was the highest in rank, the highest Israelite in rank at that time. So he did it on behalf of his people, asking forgiveness, etc. And then an angel, Gabriel, uh, came to him and came with a great, great, great prophecy. One of the greatest one in scripture in terms of the Israel uh, evangel. That prophecy is that there were 70 weeks, and that is weeks of years, proclaimed over 
uh, Israel, the people of Israel and Jerusalem, their city. 70 weeks. That means, let's, let's be clear from the get-go, that means not 70 times 7 is 490, because you also have to count the Jubilee years. So these 70 uh, weeks, you can also say they are 10 blocks. Listen to this. 10 blocks of 49 years. And 49 is the 7 times 7, right? So 10 blocks of 49. That's 10 times 49 is 490. But then to each block, you add the, the one single holy set apart jubilee year. You add that. That's 10 times 1. So that makes 10 times, not 49, but 50 is 500. So it is again a period, a rounded period, structured of 500 years. Remember that. That's how it's counted. Okay. So a period of uh, 500 years, uh, 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 77, that means period of seven years, are proclaimed over Israel and the temple uh, and the Jerusalem and the temple, of course. Um, uh, so that and the, at the end, six purposes are fulfilled. I, I don't have it now uh, for me. Uh, let me take a quick look. Uh, maybe I, yeah, I will read it quickly. Uh, that is in Daniel 9, verse 24. That is, uh, 77 are segregated for your people, Gabriel says, and for your holy city to detain. That's the first one, to detain trans transgression. The second one, to make sin come to an end. Wow. The third one, to make a propitiatory shelter for depravity. The fourth one, to bring the righteousness of the eons. Huh? That means the eon, the, the next eon, the fourth righteous eon, will start. And then the fifth one, the, the fifth one, to seal the vision and the prophetic word. You can also divide it in two, to seal the vision and to seal the prophetic word. Then you have two. And then the, the last one, to anoint the holy of holies. Six, or if you want, 70. Uh, seven, uh, seven. Uh, seven purposes. Seven goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Achievements. So this is important. So these goals are attained or accomplished at the end of the 70 weeks. That's what it means. That's what it means. So wow. 3,500 from Adam plus 500. Remember, 500 is 4,000 exactly from Adam. Again, structured. But let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So from that moment on, 3,500, the, 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 the counting starts, the countdown or the counting starts of the 70 weeks. Why does the counting start then? Because the decree of King Cyrus from Persia, from Persia, that decree is the only valid decree that counts for the countdown, that the count starts. Why? Because it has been prophesied by the prophet Isaiah even in more than 200 years before uh, Cyrus was even born. Mm -hmm. So when Cyrus saw his name mentioned <laughs> in a scroll in the chronicle, 200 yeah. years before his birth, he saw his name mentioned there i mean he was like what what is wow what is the wow wow he was totally baffled he was mind blown that is the point so immediately he made a decree yes of course i'm going to uh, i'm going to even finance things i'm going to send you uh, i'm going to pay for things that you need please go and build up your city jerusalem 
and build, rebuild the temple. And that is also what is mentioned. Remember, it is mentioned in that decree, and you can find that in Isaiah 44, 20, 28. It is mentioned in that decree that it is about both, because a lot of scholars are disputing this, not true, about both the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the temple, both. Because the first temple was, of course, destroyed, Solomon's temple, by Nebuchadnezzar at the moment of the exile, of course. So the rebuilding of the temple and the rebuilding of the city, both are in the decree of Cyrus. That is the only valid decree. The subsequent decrees by Darius and by Artaxerxes, those decrees are not valid, but merely an, a reaffirmation of uh, of cyrus decree so that is the authoritative decree so then the count starts at 3500 then what does the prophecy say the prophecy says then uh let's see uh, uh first 25 now know and be intelligent from the going forth of the word to cause a return and a rebuild Jerusalem from then until Messiah the governor, Messiah means anointed, the governor, the ruler, is seven sevens and 62 sevens. Very important. Why not 69? Why not 69? Why separate seven and separately 62? Because the seven, the first seven, is about the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the temple. And that has been rebuilt in 50 years. Seven times seven plus that one jubilee year, remember? That's 50 years. And uh, Jerusalem ha and the temple have been rebuilt in that 50 years, in the seven. The seven weeks. Seven weeks again is seven times seven plus one jubilee year. Okay. The next block, the next block is 62. So that is until Messiah the governor. And then after that, you will read in first 20, uh, first 27 that, uh, then he will be master of a covenant with many for one seven. But who is the he? Who is the mm -hmm. he? The he is mentioned in verse 26 because there it says, we will go to it. Sorry, Joel? I was saying it's the other governor. The exactly. Other governor Grammatical rules say that when you see a he, it can only refer to the last mentioned character. So it says after the 62 sevens, listen to this one because God's word is accurate, act to the T. It doesn't say in the 70th week, Messiah shall be cut off. It doesn't say that. Again, it doesn't say in the 70th week, Messiah shall be cut off. It doesn't say that. It says after the 62 weeks or sevens. That means after the 69, including the first seven, remember, Messiah shall be cut off and there will be no adjudication for him. Listen to this. The city and the holy place shall be laid in ruins with the offer other governor coming. Then its end, it's by this, the offer other governor is the last man, the last person mentioned. Then its end is by an overflowing and until the end of the war, desolations will be decided then he verse 27 that is the other governor will be master of a covenant with many for one seven there you have the remaining seven the seven plus 62 plus one is 70. so the remaining seven comes last and that is also mentioned separately for a reason of course. Okay. 
So let's go back to the chronology. I think this is clear now, I think. All right, so it's the count starts at 2,500. And then the first 50, that's the next line that is grayed out here. And that is 3550 from Adam. And that is Jerusalem and the temple are rebuilt at the end of that 50 years, the, the seven, seven weeks. Okay. And then we count 62 weeks until Messiah, the anointed, the anointed one, Messiah, the governor. But before we arrive there, we have an intermediate one. And that is that in the, we are talking about uh, 3.5 BC. You could also say minus 3.5 AD. And that is the year of the mo or the moment in which Jesus is born. The moment on which Jesus is born. That's in the spring, not in the fall. In the spring on 10 Nisan. Why 10 Nisan? And why? Let, let, let's start first at. 3.5 so that that means he's born in the in the year 4 bc for in the year 4 bc but exactly at half of that year because exactly in the spring in half of the year 4 bc so three and a half bc that is his exact moment of birth so why 10 nissan this is not scripture, but it is scripture on the other hand, because in Luke 2, 42, you will read that when he became, not when he was, but when he became 12 years of age, his, pa his parents traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover, which is 14 Nisan, four days later. So when he became 12 years, so why do I come up with 10 Nissan? Because there are some typological reasons. First of all, in Exodus, you will read that the Israelites had to take a lamp into the house. If you go into the, to the right a little bit, they had to take a lamp into the house on, 10, on the 10th of Nissan of the first month, because Nissan became the first month at that time. So in Exodus 12, verse 3, you can read that. And mm -hmm. feed that lamb, feed it for four days until the Passover, until the sacrifice. So, and feed it with what? From a trough, especially designed for lambkins. And in what was Jesus laid as a baby? In a trough, a feeding trough for lambkins. Okay, mm -hmm. that's that's clue number one but also he had to be circumcised remember in the beginning when i talked about the assumptions and in scripture it's it's, it's an inclusive count so uh, he had to be circumcised on the eighth day when he's born on 10 nisan on what day did he have to be circumcised on the eighth day which is 70 nisan And yep. what happened on 17 Nisan? He was roused from the dead. Resurrection. Death. Resurrection, yeah. exactly. Wow. And, first and, fruits. And, first fruits and resurrection. Uh, sorry, circumcision. Sorry, Joel. New life. In, in the new life, yes. Circumcision talks about bringing forth new life. Exactly. Amen. So that's why I'm quite sure in my heart that he was born on 10 Nissan. I think there's no doubt, but this is just me sharing with you. Okay, let's continue. So that is on the year 3962.5 from Adam, from Adam. And then the next milestone, exactly 26 AD, the left column. And that is 3992 from Adam. And that is exactly 492 years from the moment that count started of the 70 weeks. 492 years. So how many years are left? Eight years. 
because the period was 500 years, remember? So we are now arrived at 492 from the count. Mm. So what happened then? Messiah, the governor, happened. Because that was the moment in 26 AD in the fall, in the fall, when he was exactly, look at the gray column, 29.5 years of age. And scripture says he was 30 years of age, or he's, it says he was around 30 years. So that means, again, to be consistent, 29 and a half, according to our calculation. Consistency. And that is when he was baptized in the River Jordan by his nephew, or his cousin, sorry, uh, John the Baptist. And then what happened when he came out of the water? A dove came and a, a, a voice out of heaven. This is my son, in whom I, uh, uh, my beloved son, in whom I have pleasure, something like that. And that is the moment he was anointed to be king. He was not crowned king yet, and not yet now. It will still be, it is still in the future. But he was anointed to be king already, just like David was anointed to be king by Samuel when he was just a teenager. But he was crowned king years later. Same with Jesus. He was anointed king when he came out of the water. That is that moment of Messiah, the governor. That's when it ended, the 62 weeks, the second one, the seven, and then 62 weeks until Messiah, the governor. That's when it ended. Okay, now we continue. Then his ministry lasted three and a half years. So then we arrive at uh, 20, uh, 3395.5 from Adam. And that's when he was, uh, let's see, no. We, we, Oh, no. Yeah, that's good. That's all right. So Jesus, as you can read with me in the gray, uh, in the gray line, in the gray line, in the gray row, Jesus turned 60, uh, 33 years of age on 10 Nissan. Do you see that? That's 10 Nissan in the year 30 AD. So it says 29 and a half in the left column because I just rounded it up. But 29 and a half is in the year 30 AD because the years in scripture start at one Tishri in the fall. That mm -hmm. is the, the day of Rosh Hashanah. That's when the year officially starts. That's when Adam was created on one Tishri. That's the point. So the year 31 AD would start, let's, sorry, sorry, 30. 30 AD would finish that same year as Jesus was crucified and uh, uh, roused and resurrected at one Tishri in that calendar year. So Jesus was, he died and he rose again in, uh, in Nissan in that calendar year that we know as calendar year, 30 AD. And one Tishri, some uh, six months later, that would be the end of 30 AD and the start of 31 AD. I hope you see this. Okay, so we are in the year 30 AD. Uh, and in the spring, he turned 33 years of age. And on his birthday, I think that was Palm Sunday. That was when he came with, uh, when he cried over Jerusalem. And when he came on a donkey, etc., etc., so he died on 14 Nisan, and he conquered that on 17 Nisan. And of course, he went to heaven 40 days later, and that means 40 days after his resurrection, not after Passover, after resurrection. Okay. All right. So. Um, that is, we are now in the year 30 AD. So then we continue, and then we count three and a half years. And then we are three and a half years after that happened. Then we arrive in the fall of 33 AD, 
And that's why this is a rounded uh, uh, number, 33, because it's exactly the fall, the end of 30, uh, 33 uh, AD. Do you see that? And that was when Stephen was stoned. But listen to this one. What did Stephen see when he was stoned? He saw Jesus not sitting at the right hand of the majesty, but standing. This is unique because standing is a sign of action, coming into action. That means this says it is a symbol, it is a, a vision that implies that Jesus was on the verge of returning to the earth because that would be the 70th week. That would be the end of the 70th week. That moment there would be end of the 70th week. So in the 70th week back then, what mm -hmm. happened? Jesus was crucified and died. He rose again. He went to heaven. And at the end, Stephen was stoned. That's what, and of course, the whole ministry of Jesus on earth. That's what happened on, on earth during that seven years since Jesus' anointing, since his baptism. Okay, so this is clear. Again, that would have been the 70th, 70th week of Daniel. After that, after that stoning of Stephen, there would be one year left, the Jubilee year, in which the earth would be, of course, prepared for the millennium. But wait a minute. Did Jesus come back? No, he didn't come. This me and why? This is huge. Because his, the, the, his coming was conditional. And also the, 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 the mentioning or the, the proclamation of the 70th week was also conditional. And what is the condition? The acceptance acceptance by israel of their messiah and they didn't accept their messiah especially the leadership they rejected their messiah that's why jesus didn't come anymore and the millennium did not start anymore you see the point so there was a kind of course it was already planned by god from the beginning we know that absolutely speaking but relatively speaking it looks like now the kingdom has been postponed for 2,000 years. And that is exactly the 6,000 years according to God's plan, the, the day of man. So we know that God is in control of everything. So that didn't went through. Jesus didn't come back. Okay, now this is clear. So then we arrive at 70 AD. We know what happened there. But let's be very, very, very clear. Seven, what happened in 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem and the, and the second temple by the Roman army of uh, General Titus, who became Caesar later, very, very soon after that. Uh, that is outside of the prophecy of Gabriel to Daniel. It is outside of the prophecy of 70 weeks. It is not part of the prophecy. So the things you read in verse 26 and 27 are not the things that happened in 70 AD because mm. that is out of scope. It is out of the scope of that prophecy. And to even add to that, like even the nature of the destruction of Jerusalem, Daniel's prophecy speaks to destruction by flood and Titus' destruction was won by fire. So it's it's very clear, and even in Revelation, it speaks about the dragon releasing water to to destroy the woman, and it's after that that she escapes into the wilderness. So yes, aligning that with Daniel, it's it's a it's a flood event, it's a deluge uh, that yeah. destroys Jerusalem in the future. Yes, I I think in general the the judgments in uh, Rev mentioned in Revelation are fiery judgments. They are fire judgments, but that yeah. specific one. That you read in Revelation 12, that the dragon uh, emits water after uh, and the, and the earth opens and swallows yeah. up the, the flood. 
that uh, of course so that will be a short lot but that mm -hmm. is of course uh, what will happen definitely yes i agree totally okay so now we arrive at the present tense we are in the year ad 2024 and that is the year 5990 from adam so this eon this third eon will end in 10 years exactly in in october 2034 according to this chronology and again i don't see any reason to 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 doubt this chronology not not one up till now again uh dear watchers i challenge you please let me know if you see anything that is not correct so we are in 2024 so now i i ask you joel to go yes uh well, stop 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 yes okay so what is my expectation we know so it will end in the year 6000 from adam we know that so that's the green column so the uh last year will be a jubilee year 6000 it will be a jubilee year from adam before that jubilee year always becomes a, a uh, becomes a sabbath year sabbatical year and remember the sabbatical year before a jubilee year is always one year and 10 days because it ends not at Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah, but it ends at Yom Kippur, 10 days later. So remember that one, because what I believe is that Jesus will not come. Oh, well, let me calculate first. Sorry, let me calculate. Mm -hmm. so, so the sabbatical year is the end of the normal seven year uh cycle that's the sabbatical year the end right and that is 5999 that's the year 5999 obviously so if you subtract seven you arrive in the year 5992 that is to me in my view the start in september also of course that is the start of the uh period of false peace or oh, let me know no no sorry i make a mistake here that is the start of the real or definite definitive 17th week in daniel the last one that's when it will start the real one that will lead to the accomplishment of those six goals remember in first uh, 24. so that is when it will start the 17th week will start in september 2026 i personally believe just let me make that remark already about the snatching away of the body of christ i personally believe that the snatching away will happen definitely before the start of the 17th week definitely but i even believe that the that the that the opening of the first seal in revelation 6 verse 2 will also be before the start of the 17th week because there has to be time for that end times leader to emerge on the world stage before he can be a broker or a um, uh, how can i say that how he can bro uh, before he can uh, 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 have the form the the formal capacity and power to affirm a covenant with many to strengthen a covenant with many as uh, uh daniel 927 says so before he can have that power in the world in all of the world he ex he is accepted to do that then there has to be some time <laughs> passed before that happened so that's why i subtract some time i don't know how much time that the that the first seal opens first but i believe also that the snatching away also happens before the opening of the first seal 
also. And mm. even stronger, I believe that the first seal will open the second after the snatching away. The second. No gaps. No gaps in God's actions. So again, snatching away happens in a, in a, in a fraction of a second. And the next second is the opening of the first seal. And that is that moment. Listen to this. In mm. that moment, everything changes in one hit. Everything changes because Israel will immediately will become God's people again. And all the other nations on earth will immediately be removed from the olive tree and be second range people. In one second, that will happen. Wow. Yes. So I let that this. sink in. Let it sink in. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, Tim. so the 70th week, that's what we can calculate, ends in 5999 from Adam, and it starts in 5992 from Adam, seven years earlier, obviously. But then I believe that the, uh, the great um, tribulation, the abomination of desolation, will start approximately three and a half years, a little more than three and a half years, but that's another story, approximately three and a half years from the start. That will be 6 September 2026 or around, let, let me say September 2026, around that time. That's when the 17th week of Daniel starts, when that covenant with many will be affirmed or confirmed or strengthened. So uh, at approximately three and a half years and then you arrive at the start of the great tribulation that's when the nations will uh, afflict Israel in a unbelievable way a great tribulation that never happened since humans are on the earth as Jesus says in Matthew 24 21 I think so that is uh, my calculation but that's just just my curiosity it's monday 22 april 2030 when it starts just my curiosity that, that can be wrong okay so when does jesus return like i said not at the end of the 70th week but one year earlier why because he said in his word that he, Yes, that the great short. tribulation would be shot, it would be cut short. Otherwise, there would not be flesh left, any flesh left. So, mm. uh, yeah, so mm, there is so much to say about these things. But anyway, mm. refrain from the temptation. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be cut short. Not only that, but he will surprise many people with that move. He will come a year, year earlier. But remember that that last year that he will skip and come earlier, that year is a Sabbath year. Not only that, it's a, it's a, pre, it's a longer Sabbath year of one year and 10 days. So what I believe is that while the seals are being opened, from uh, September 2026, uh, sorry, even before that uh, onwards, the seals are being opened. First seal, second, third, fourth, fifth seal. The fifth seal is the great tribulation that Israel is so martyred from all sides and also believers, proselytes, etc. They are martyred from all sides by the nations. But then, boom, Jesus comes one year earlier. And then the, the tables turn, the tables turn immediately because then God's judgment is not via the nations on Israel anymore from Jesus' return onwards, but now God's judgment will, will go directly to the nations themselves who, uh, who afflicted his people Israel. That those are the trumpet and bowl judgment. Those are the judgments of God on the nations. 
And from that moment that Jesus comes, that will be the start of the judgment. Then the 144,000 will be sealed and mm -hmm. safe because they will be sent out in all of the earth to herald. And Jesus comes back and from that time his people, his people is our, do I have to say are, his people is safe, are safe. His people are safe. So that means that he will from that moment liberate his people. I will not say a lot because I made a long series about the return of Christ that will be published soon. But he will liberate his people, oh boy, in a in a tremendous way on earth, while on earth. So that is what is called in the word of God, his parousia, his presence. That's what it means. Because in that sabbatical year, he will be present on earth that last sabbatical year with his people. His people will have rest, Sabbath, rest with their Messiah, rest from all the afflictions. Do you see how everything falls into place? Very beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. He, he comes one year earlier and during that sabbatical year, he will be on the earth liberating his people from all captivity in a lot of countries, etc. He will liberate them. And he will march through the desert toward Jerusalem and a glorious uh, uh, entry in Jerusalem. But that's another story. Let's not go there. So that <laughs> what will happen. <laughs> that's what okay. will happen. So he will, I, I repeat, he will come in and then and then i mentioned the year in 20 in september 2032 that's when the return of jesus is and in that year and 10 days of that last sabbath year that sabbatical year then will be the judgment of god the uh, trumpet and bowl judgments on the nations who afflicted his people israel clear until now right but now a nice touch because Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount of Olive, he also said that his coming, his presence, that's not coming, but his presence, his parousia, will be as in the days of Noah. Well, no, be before he comes also, will be as, as in the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. Then he mentioned some traits, some characteristics. People will be eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, etc. But why does he mention that? Because, wait a minute, if the trumpet and bowl judgment, the terrible judgments from the, from the heavens would fall on the earth, people would not have time to eat and drink and marry and giving in marriage. No. So the point is that at that time that they eat and drink, they are still considering themselves to be safe. Because they are the ones who afflict the, the people of Israel. So they are still safe. And why can they eat and drink? Because they took the mark of the beast. Babylon agreed. That's why they could eat and drink. You see the, the little hints that Jesus is giving? Mm -hmm. So that's what the days of Noah are about. But if you study more, as an example about the flood, the judgment of God in the form of flood in the days of Noah, what will you read and find in Genesis that the flood was exactly, the judgment was exactly one day and ten days. Sorry, one year and ten days. I said one day. One year and ten days long. The flood judgment of God. Mm. And the exact time length of the judgments of the bowls and uh, the trumpet and the bowls. One day and ten days. Uh, one, I say it again. One year and ten days. And when will it end? On Yom Kippur. That's October 2033. And what will happen on that day? Yes. Armageddon. 
will happen. That's the day on which the the head of the enemy will be crushed, and the uh, and the beast will be divided in two. He will be cut in half by Jesus. Literally, that has a meaning too. Sh shall I shall I share that with you quickly? Go. Oh. In the in the old ancient times in the Middle East, when a promise was being cut, that's what they that's how they call it. They cut a promise. A promise was being agreed upon. What happened is they then they would cut an animal in half and lay the two halves of that animal um, body uh, uh, from each other so that a path uh, uh, is between those two halves, right? And then the one who gives the promise walks on that path between those two halves of the body of the animal. Mm. What is the thinking behind that? If one breaks their promise, the same will happen with them. <laughs> In Genesis 15, you will read that when God gave a promise to Abraham. Abraham, the same thing happened. An animal was cut in half, and God, of course, through an angel or through a messenger, walked through those two halves of that animal body, that, co uh, that corpse. Uh, um, and then that means that it's the same thinking behind it. If the promise would be broken, the same would happen to the person who broke that promise. So what happens in, uh, on, in September 2026? A covenant with many will be confirmed by whom? By governor. Other, governor. Yes, that end times leader who mm -hmm. will become peace later. And he breaks his promise. And he breaks his promise at that that's moment. He, in half of the seven, he breaks it. So Jesus why. will take care of him personally. He will cut him in half, and you will read that proof in Habakkuk Ooh. three, verse thirteen, where it said the head of the the head of the wicked one will be cut from. And then there is a wrong translation from tie to neck, but it's wrong. Tie is a wrong translation. It's to avoid the word uh, scrotum. It's mm -hmm. just from the scrotum on, onto the top. He is cut in half. It's very interesting <laughs> because Judas nice. <laughs> considered a type of the end times leader and his death was in a very similar fashion as well as yeah he, when his bowels came out of yes yeah. but yeah. but this but this one but this one is like whoa jesus will personally do it with him Woo! personally yeah. he'll be singing <laughs> oh he'll, he'll be singing hi <laughs> <laughs> oh god anyway so now uh, i hope we we i think arrived at the end uh, because mm -hmm. of course in the in october 2033 that's the end of the of the trumpet and bold judgment and then the whole army is of course uh, defeated of the enemy and then will arrive the, the jubilee year the last year the 6000th year and that will be, of course, the year of restoration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, before the millennium actually starts in October of 2034. So I hope it is clear. So um, are there questions? Uh, is something maybe uh, was something too fast uh, explained or et cetera? It was just very interesting to me, the alignment, especially between the Jubilee years and the very key events that we can remember from, from scriptural history that happens yeah. there. And of course, it, it just goes back to the alignment and everything happening according to divine design. We can see all of that kind of like a symmetry, like a paintbrush just being yes. woven throughout the scripture yes. leading to this to the end of, of this wicked eon. Exactly. Know. That is exactly also my finding in this chronology that it is so structured 
uh, in the years from Adam, everything adds up and there is always a milestone, 500 years or 1,000 years. It is so fantastic. It is fantastic. So yeah. to me, I am quite sure of this chronology. And again, I'm also therefore quite sure of the fact that there are only 10 years in this eon. Sorry, Fred. Um, when Jesus returns in that sixth year and he's with his people, delivering his people for that year in 10 days, does he go back up and return? Good a question. And Good come question. Back? Because we yeah. have a lot of scriptures in regard to his returning to the earth, yeah. brightness of his coming, all these events going on with his return. Yeah. Go. Well, it, um, so the glorified body that Jesus has, mm. for instance, is of course a heavenly glorified body. But of course, you can dim your glory uh according to the terrestrial uh, realm so that people see that you shine but not become blind or mm -hmm. or even dim it further as in the 40 days when he was with them that he didn't even shine anything i think because that mm -hmm. would really make them worry <laughs> but it was a little, a little bit but don't was walk a down the dark alley aren't yeah. aren't you shining a little bit there <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Am I seeing correctly? <laughs> yeah. You're awfully bright, man. <laughs> but Paul but, and, and the glory when Paul was on the road to Damascus was a different. Yeah, you don't, you don't was want a different to one because that, that was for a reason that he 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 appeared to Paul or to Saul with his Saul. heavenly glory and not even totally, of course, but no. he he dimmed himself so that Paul so that Saul only went blind. And he was not uh, uh, decomposing his body, let, let's say, because it would be even heavier. But the point is that, of course, that was for a reason because of the heavenly calling of Saul and, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. the body of Christ. But in the Mount of Transfiguration, there was a shining going on, but it was mm -hmm. a vision that was shown to the disciples, the three. That was a vision. Be sure that was not really uh moses and elijah who were standing there because they are dead and that is right dead. that is dead. important so it was a vision that they saw yes. important okay so uh to your question Fred, uh i forgot to mention it but in that glorified body of course jesus can go uh, back and forth through ha in heaven in five minutes not even so he can go do some things take some errands, etc., and come back. And the next minute he is here again, like, you know, so yeah. I think he will go back uh, sometimes back and forth to heaven. But there is one passage that is important, very important even. That is Daniel 7, verse 13, where it shows that Jesus is in heaven. And that is after that, the, that is at the end when he arrives in jerusalem yeah. with his people then you see daniel let me read daniel says i was perceiving the in the visions of the night and behold with the clouds of the heavens one like a son of a mortal was arriving but listen to this it says he came on to whom the transfer of days that is god himself that is god the father so he came in heaven he, he doesn't this is not about the return of jesus on the earth out mm -hmm. of heaven this is about the coming into heaven from the earth mm. came on to the transfer of days and they brought him near before him near before him and then verse 14 to him was granted that was was when he was is crowned and that will happen in the future of course that's when he will be crowned king officially in heaven by his father. His father is the only one who can crown him king. No one else, of course. And he anointed so, him. Exactly, of also. So to him was granted jurisdiction and esteem and a kingdom that all the peoples and leagues and language uh, groups shall serve him. His jurisdiction is an Eonian jurisdiction, which is both the fourth and the fifth eon that mm -hmm. shall not pass away 
so the the jurisdiction shall not pass away and his kingdom shall not be confined the jesus his reign will pass away he will give it over to his father but the reign itself will continue by his father mm. remember that one also so the point is that jesus came at the end when he liberated his people he was he is then not king yet he is not king yet then he goes to heaven to be crowned king then he comes back on that then, white horse then right. he comes back on that white horse the official the official the official um, and that's why you see him with many crowns on his head revelation 19 on his on his thigh are written names and also one the of name the name of the word and lord of lords right then he is king of kings because he's now officially crowned king you see the point so mm -hmm. that's that's the order so the coming back when his angels will be uh, his message will be especially Sad. gather all his people will be at the start of the sabbatical year and his so that's that's another story that's not on a white horse that is the point we will come with him the body of christ will come with him we will witness all these things and there are some secrets that i have in that series that i will publish that will have what will happen during that return and parousia of christ but i will not mention it because that <laughs> are real spoiler alerts so oh, follow, the series, follow the series and you will see and what and will happen that, it will be when, it will be fantastic when is that coming out soon after this current series okay yes okay after this one soon. so soon after that word soon, soon i after. don't know what i don't know what that so, is so. <laughs> it's like so almost I, I, <laughs> I no 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 yes but, but soon this this series is not a very long one okay. i can take a look very quickly for you i can take a look um just okay it will start on june 10. yay okay june so 10. that's that's quite yeah that's quite soon less than a month from now so um mm -hmm. uh, i wanted to say something <laughs> i forgot it i'm sorry um oh yeah again i let me repeat this is very because there are so there's so much confusion in, uh, regarding that the return of christ that we all know and talk about is at the start of that sabbatical year not a white horse we will be with him he will come in huge glory and power and there will so, also be tens of thousands myriads of messengers with us so we will witness what will happen he will dispatch those those messengers to gather his people from all the corners mm -hmm. of the earth that is at the start of the sabbatical year and at the so in, during that sabbatical year he will liberate his people from so many places and a huge march through the desert it will be with millions of people and at the end of that sabbatical year he will go to the heavens to be crowned king when he marches and he enters into jerusalem a glorious entry and then he will uh, uh, before I think before the wedding of the lamb, the wedding dinner of the lamb, he will go and he will uh, be crowned officially. Come back, he will kill the beast and uh, of course the false prophet, eradicate their army, and then the wedding uh, dinner of the lamb can will happen. Right, the supper, the supper. Yes, what is called the supper. So uh other questions remarks just the mathematical perfection of it is quite incredible yeah i agree i totally agree okay so let's then um stop here so that we do not hold up uh, our dear watchers i think this is has been a, a total package so maybe for some people it has to sink in yet and you can watch it how many times you want of course but then if there are no other questions remarks i will end it with uh, thank you for watching
I really appreciate it. And I hope you get everything that has been explained here. And I hope that through Holy Spirit, God will minister to you and you will see the value of this chronology, which we are able to have with us. And that is just 